this year's May 20th Internet Valentine's Day was particularly different. It's not just the flowers scattered all over the ground that are broken, but also the hearts of single and gold-digging women in China. The loudest cries online come from them. A lady who claims to represent older single women said, Do older single women feel like breaking down on May 20th? I am breaking down, really breaking down. From the moment I woke up this morning until now, I haven't received a single greeting. No one sent me a milk tea, let alone a gift or a red envelope. Do you think I should break down or not? The key thing is that there's something even more heartbreaking. Right now, I just want to give men gifts, send them rent envelopes, and order them milk tea. I want men to feel the warmth and care that we older single women can give. But I can't even find such a person. I want to be a simp right now. Does that make sense? But I don't even have the opportunity to be a simp. Do you think being a simp is bad? It's great. At least it proves you are still young, you can still feel moved, and you still have money. Older single women like me don't even have the chance to be a simp anymore. Do you think I should break down or not? The most terrifying is the combination of these gold digging and single women. This woman is 39 years old and has been unsuccessful in blind dates for years. She demands a dowry of 580,000 yuan to marry her. Today I want to speak from the heart. I am considered an older single woman by the public, 39 years old this year. I have a master's degree and have never been married. Actually, there are two types of leftover women. One is the ordinary single older woman, and the other is a high-quality single woman like me. I'm still single despite going on many blind dates because my overall qualities are too outstanding, making it hard to find someone who matches me. I don't want to settle, so I remain single. I also found that men around me are very superficial. They only look at your appearance and age, not your inner qualities. No matter how high my education or how excellent my overall qualities are, because I am already 39 years old, I have lost my value in the marriage market. Over the years, I have insisted that my dowry must be 580,000 yuan. I am looking for a first marriage with someone who has not married yet not someone marrying a second or third time. So the only thing I can do is continue to wait for my true soulmate. These remarks directly scared off many male netizens. They commented, you say average men are scary, but aren't average women just as frightening? Demanding a house, a car, and a dowry, 580,000 yuan, alone would take us half a lifetime to save. Forget marriage, just bury us already. The collapse of the simp economy has made it impossible for gold diggers to control simp's wallet. For single women, the dream of marrying a rich and handsome Prince Charming seems even more out of reach. Thus, on 520 day, a phenomenon emerged on one side, gold diggers getting nothing and the other side, older single women lamenting, no man pays attention to me. The so-called simp economy is a popular term that has emerged on the internet in mainland China in recent years. In the simp economy, simp describes those who are excessively attentive and overly adoring of the opposite sex. And the main point is, despite their continuous dedication and attentiveness, they may not necessarily win the favor of the other person. The consumption generated by these simps in their efforts to please is collectively referred to as a simp economy. It must be said that Chinese capitalists have made a fortune off the simp economy. And those who are vain and willing to use their bodies and look to exchange for gifts and money, treating love as a business, are the gold diggers who rely most on the simp economy. They need men to buy, buy, buy for them. In fact, the rise of the May 20th festival is a consumer trap set by businesses. During good economic times, people don't care much about where their money goes, only whether they spend it happily. Only in economic downturns, when money is tight, do people become clear-headed and see through the capitalist schemes. The once romantic confession day, May 20th, is now labelled as, by many men, as gold diggers day. The public opinion suggests this directly proves that men are waking up. In the past, the tradition of men 
Unilaterally buying gifts for women led to unequal spending and returns for men. Sometimes, if they bought the wrong gift or not enough, instead of praise, they face criticism. Many now believe it's better to spend money on themselves or their families. Pursuing a relationship not only requires money but also time and effort. For simps, long-term dedication does not bring certainty, only increasing sunk costs. Moreover, in the current economic downturn, the pressures from unemployment and housing prices, young people are losing confidence in the future. Nowadays, many young people believe that making money is better than finding a partner. In the midst of busy working schedules, managing a relationship that requires significant financial expenditures has become a burden. When times are good, they might have indulged a bit, but when money is tight and expectations are lowered, they have to consider cost effectiveness. With limited funds, investing in a vague dream seems less appealing than spending on oneself and enjoying life in the present. Due to the collapse of the simp economy, businesses have experienced the worst sales on record for this May twentieth. Scenes of ten yuan for five bouquets and piles of flowers and garbage bins seems to be announcing to the Chinese society there is no way we're spending money for love. This was a scene on May twentieth this year. The video showed beautifully packaged flowers, which used to be the most sought-after items on this day, now reduced to ten yuan for five bouquets at street stalls. Flowers, ten yuan for five bouquets, ten yuan for five bouquets. Despite this, there are still very few customers, and most of them are women. It's important to know that in previous years, these flowers were in high demand on May twentieth. If you didn't reserve them in advance, buying on the day meant outrageous prices and uncertain availability. But now, piles of flowers are turning into mountains of garbage, and no one wants them. Previously, on May twentieth, the area around trash bins would be filled with beautifully packaged flowers and gifts. You could make more money by scavenging around a trash bin than by going to work. But this year's May twentieth, trash bins weren't as lively. Most of what is discarded were flowers, and the occasional discarded gift was nowhere near the quality of previous years. With the collapse of the simp economy, there's not even worthwhile trash to pick up anymore. This young lady tried to capitalize on a couple's argument by scavenging for discarded gifts to make some money, but when she opened one, it turned out to be just a bag of dates. Look, there's a couple arguing over there. Oh my gosh, the gift is from Dior. I really don't understand how you can get rejected after giving a Dior gift. What's going on here, dude? You're something else. Putting dates in a Dior box to give to a girl. I thought I score when I picked this up. Do you think that's fair to the girl receiving the gift? She opened it full of hope, only to find dates inside. You don't even deserve me picking it up. No wonder you're single. Oh well, I'll take it anyway. Dates are pretty tasty and good for your, the blood. She also remarked, "This year, the gifts from guys are especially cheap." This video content creator tried to make some money on May twentieth by picking up unwanted gifts from others, only to find that with the poor economy, there were no gifts to collect. <laughs> Whose handsome guy's gift is this? Left here. Come claim it. Let's get a close up. I told you not to be a content creator, and here you are, out at night picking up trash. Maybe it's because the economy is bad now, so people are afraid to buy gifts, and we can't even find trash. But there are so many people picking up trash today. Everyone wants to get something cheap. Wow, we found a treasure. There's an Armani lipstick hidden in these flowers, just perfect for me. The person who gave the flowers understands romance, but we ended up with it. Those people who found LV and Hermes gifts today's, where do you think they picked them up? It's all staged. On May twentieth, the Chengdu Metro Station entrance became an internet sensation. The trash cans outside the station were piled high with beautifully packaged flowers, with no one claiming them. This scene sparked heated discussions online, with many female viewers expressing their feelings that their lives were worse than a trash can, which was filled with flowers, while they received none. The collapse of the simp economy is most accurately felt by merchants. Many flower shops, jewelry stores, and hotels hoped to cash in on the holiday, but reality dealt them a heavy blow.
The owner of a Suibei gold store in Shenzhen recorded a video complaining that this year's sales were the lowest ever. Based on the sales data from previous stores, the sales performance on this year's May 20th is probably the worst ever. For those running hotels, restaurants, and flower shops, how are you holding up? Additionally, this hotel owner complained. In previous years, the king-sized beds for May 20th were fully booked well in advance and prices would have gone up by now. But today, I noticed that on Sea Trip and May Tuan in Xi'an City, the prices for king-sized rooms in all central business districts and popular tourist spots like the Bell and Drum Tower and the giant Wild Goose Pagoda start at 100 yuan. The prices are generally between 100 and 200 yuan, which is lower than in previous years. Including my hotel, we still have a dozen or so-called king-sized rooms available. So I think the market is really struggling. Anyone thinking of investing in the hotel business should be extremely cautious. The most noteworthy is the flower industry, which relies heavily on luck and has been significantly impacted by the economic downturn. For flower suppliers, May was originally a peak season for buying and selling flowers. It starts with the May Day wedding season, followed by Mother's Day, and then the climax with May 20th. Flowers represent romance, surprise, and a touch of joy in everyday life. The more people crave this sweetness, romance, and surprise, the higher the price goes, with the industry growing by over 10% annually due to demand. But the upstream of the flower industry is undergoing a massive transformation. Once prominent unicorn companies are now in decline. Amora Flora, the first listed flower e-commerce company, was forced to delist in 2019. The chill in the industry has directly affected downstream flower retail stores. The lady in the video is a flower shop owner. The prices of flowers in her shop on this year's May 20th hit a new low and sales were dismally poor. Yesterday, I said it didn't have high hopes for this year's May 20th, but reality turned out to be even worse than I imagined. The price of flowers has taken a nosedive over the past two days, catching everyone off guard. A few days before May 20th, flower merchants stocked up at the highest prices. When I placed my orders on the platform, it was also at peak prices, but today, the prices have plummeted to rock bottom. How am I supposed to sell these flowers? Wholesalers are everywhere saying flowers are cheap now, but our flower shop bought at the highest prices. In the end, we're accused of customers of being a greedy shop. This is truly a bitter pill to swallow. This round of harvesting is thorough. Now, let's talk about the orders on that day. As of now, I've only received 10 orders, whereas in previous years, it was at least 20. So it's halved this year. A couple of days ago, people were still ordering flowers, but today my phone is silent with no orders. Even those who come to buy flowers are only buying single flowers or small bouquets. Some are even buying Mother's Day flowers late for their moms instead of May 20th flowers. There are hardly any actual May 20th orders. The drastic reduction in flower orders has also impacted the food delivery industry. A delivery driver complained. Guys, I seriously suspect I'm having a fake May 20th today. They said there would be tons of orders, but at 8 a.m. I checked the platform and there wasn't a single order. Can you believe it? Not a single flower delivery order. I noticed that today there are no flower delivery orders and no food delivery orders either. Can we get some rain to boost orders? The hardship and struggles, as well as the booms and busts of the flower industry, is the upstream and downstream sectors are perhaps only truly understood by those who have experienced them. A former supply chain manager at Yihua Technology, Li Chunming, is now engaged in flower wholesale. Now, besides his wholesale business, he has also supply platforms like Hima and Ding Dong Mai Tai. Due to the short production and sales cycle of flowers and their severe price fluctuations, business like Li Chunming's have faced significant challenges, especially now with live streaming, e-commerce entering the industry, downstream channels have quickly fragmented and planning has given way to instant consumption. Each flower's journey through rapid transportation is a matter of life and death for the industry and merchants alike, akin to an adventurer's game. 
The flower market sometimes resembles the stock market. The more you sell without caution, the more you lose. Another player in the flower business, Yang Jing, entered the industry at the end of 2019, and he quickly became one of Hima's first suppliers. By 2022, his business has surpassed 100 million yuan. The fluctuations in flower prices allowed him to earn his first bucket of gold in the new industry. At that time, he bought 20 stem bundles of Carolina red roses for 35 yuan from the growing season and sold them for 140 yuan on Valentine's Day, making over a million yuan from a single deal. During Valentine's Day, the prices of roses at the Donan Flower Market could change hourly. Feud roses, which normally cost 30, 40 yuan per bundle, could even be speculated to be over 300 yuan. But if you miss the right time to buy and sell, losing 20 yuan per bundle is quite common, and merchants have to fulfill the commitments regardless. Many flower merchants lament that during holidays buying flowers is a gamble because flowers are perishable goods, unlike regular consumer products. They have a short shelf life and are prone to spoilage. They need to be quickly traded and distributed. Although daily consumption is increasing, holiday gifting still dominates the market. This means that many growing bases remain holiday-oriented, concentrating their harvesting and listing before the holidays. The sudden surge in supply and demand can cause flower prices to fluctuate wildly around these times. The once thriving flower economy gave rise to companies like Flower Plus, which marketed flowers using a blind box concept. During good economic times, the business model was highly profitable and had significant advantages in inventory turnover and loss reduction. But in the current economic downturn, losses have become commonplace. According to industry insiders, companies like Flower Plus, which primarily offer flower subscription blind boxes, also make money from flower price fluctuations. Users pay 99 yuan and receives four random bouquets a month. When market prices are low, procurement costs are low, making it easy to earn profit. But when flower prices are high and they have to fulfill orders at a loss, what's more critical is that during holidays everyone else raises prices, but Flower Plus still offers four bouquets for only 99 yuan a month. Users tend to subscribe during these high price holidays. When other vendors sell roses for 30 to 50 cents each, Flower Plus still sells for 99 yuan, causing customers to switch to cheaper alternatives. Therefore, while Flower Plus random shipping is excellent for managing inventory, making a profit is more challenging than expected. With the advent of live streaming e-commerce, flower merchants find it even harder to resist price fluctuations. A surge in orders might lead to more significant losses. A flower merchant from Yunnan specializing in dried and preserved flowers, He Xiaoshen, became a video creator in March 2023. With two months, his monthly sales reached three to four million yuan, with a net profit of around a hundred thousand yuan after deducting cost of employees and warehousing. After sales increased, price fluctuations and supply issues become major obstacles. Last December, Mr. He's shop sold fifty thousand units of a single item at a buy one get one free price of nineteen point nine yuan. The supply couldn't keep up with the soaring demand, causing the cost of that item to rise from four to five yuan to eight yuan, and at its peak up to twelve yuan. This that surge in orders resulted in a loss of at least two yuan per order. He had to switch to pre-sell and delay shipments, which led to a drop in his store's rating on the video platform. In contrast, Yang Jing, who operates on a traditional wholesale model, can maintain price stability through inventory. When market prices drop too sharply, customers turn to the market for supplies, forcing him to lower his prices until there's no profit left. Fortunately, he also owns a dozen flower shops that can absorb some of the inventory. At one point, he had over two thousand bundles of flowers left. By distributing them to his shops, with each shop handling a hundred to two hundred bundles, he could manage the surplus. If there is not a fallback channel, flowers often rot in hand. In Guangming, near every large flower greenhouse, it's common to see people dumping entire loads of flowers into garbage bins. Nearby, there are usually a few elderly people who rush to grab them. Soon, these discarded flowers might be woven into wreaths for tourists or sold casually by the roadside, with a large bucket going for ten yuan. The workers responsible for cleaning up told the media that they had to remove fifteen to sixteen cartloads of flowers waste every day, each cart weighing about a ton. 
They start cleaning at 4 a.m. and continue until 1 or 2 p.m., often unable to finish even after two days of continuous work. Currently, the situation might be even worse, as the economic downturn affects every industry, merchants' losses, piles of flour waste, and the collapse of the simp economy are just the tip of the iceberg. Like the real estate crash, it seems that people are becoming more rational, but in reality, the whole society has less money to spend.